to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. It's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcast. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Clone and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And uh, happy fourth anniversary. Uh, the podcast actually hits, we're recording this on 420, which is the actual anniversary of the podcast. Which I wish I had some weed. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> today's 4, 420, man. Which is so weird because, man. like, we, I, we advertise a fucking weed pipe in the fucking episode. You know, we have been for a while. Not that, we, not that they've given us any fucking money, but uh, we advertise a weed pipe. But I'm, like, super anti-drugs, um, anti-weed, anti-everything. I don't even drink for Christ's sakes. But uh speaking of, like, I'm glad you called me. I'm glad you called me today because today is the anniversary. We were not that we were supposed to record. We usually record on Tuesdays. Now we're recording on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But um I think the best way to put it is to say that I've been in like a depression. I I I, I like it. You know, I'm making light of it now, and I'm actually in a good mood. And I'm glad you called me. Because I've been fucking, I've been really fucking down, man. I like, I didn't want to get out of bed the past two days. You know, it's been my days off. Uh, you know, and not, not to bring down the fucking tone of the, the you know, we're, don't get me, don't get me wrong. We're going to get to the, the nerdy shit in the second half of the show. We got plenty of nerdy stuff to talk about. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, uh, Doctor Strange, Suicide Squad, and all that other good stuff. But of course, the first half of our show, we talk about the nerdy stuff. I mean, the first half of the show, we kind of talk about our lives, and I've just been fucking just depressed because, once again, without fail, fucking issues with my baby mama, uh, to the point where this week I didn't get my, I didn't get to see my daughter. She's, she's holding my daughter. She's using what little fucking power that she has, and I can't really complain. Like, I can't really, I can't do anything. I can't assert myself because the minute I assert myself, then I'm the bad guy. I'm the scumbag. Uh, she feels, she'll say she feel threatened or some shit like that. So, you know, if, if this was fucking 30 years ago, you know, common sense would rule and, and, you know, you know, she would have been shut down fucking in two seconds. But unfortunately, this being the day and age where you go to court and it's like, and I'm not, it's not like a woman thing, but you know, you go and the judge is a woman and all the lawyers are women. And you know, you go and when, you know, back when we, when they were doing child protective services investigations, all the investigators are women, you know, the, the system is definitely biased against men. And, you know, so I've learned my lesson to just keep my fucking mouth shut. I mean, I'll talk about it here in a little, like, not talk about it, but I mean, I can express the fact that I'm going through some shit right now. And because if I assert myself as a fucking man, all of a sudden I'm the bad guy and I'm the threatening scumbag, evil prick or whatever. So we go to family court in about in another week, um, a week and a day. So I have to deal with that shit. So I didn't see my daughter these past two days, you know, the, my, my days off. So that has gotten me like fucking depressed. I mean, you know, and on top of everything else, I mean, there's there's a million fucking things. Well, happy for your anniversary, people. <laughs> you know, and and I kind of like I I the one thing I do have to say about this podcast is that it is it I do want it to document like the fucking rise and fall of all the shit that I got to go through. So you know, when my like my daughter's only five years old now, but like and of course, yeah, I make fucking you know dick jokes and fart jokes or whatever. I mean, I'm not when. But, like, if she gets older or whatever, like, if these fucking files are still around, they're still on YouTube or whatever incarnation YouTube is in fucking ten years. But, you know, so she understands the shit that I went through with her mom, you know. Because her mom, you know, all the problems that we have, all the problems stem from, and every woman that I talk to tells me the same thing. The mom is doing this just to spite me. You know, like, you know, the, the, her, 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 my daughter's older brother, older half-brother, the mom doesn't do half the shit towards, but... You know, like she's she's kept him from his father, but well, let, let me, 
you know, say she kept him from his father, and but but since I'm in the picture, you know, she I, like you know she's doing right, it well, just to fucking spite me. Let, let, let me put my two cents in here. Let me let me just let me lay it down. Okay, women do this all the time. It's not like you're not the only one that this happens to because mm-hmm. women decide that they want to punish you. I guess is the best way to say it. But you know, and, and what what's really stupid about this is, you know. Let's say, for example, CPS gets called on mm-hmm. your, your woman like 50 different times. Well, not 50 different times. But let's say like five different times in the span of like two years. Mm-hmm. What are you supposed to do about that when all the cases have been unfounded, number one? But number two, you're, you're sitting there telling these CPS people, look, if you're getting calls and you're getting a couple a year, why is my kid still with the woman? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's, that's the kind of crazy world that we live in where... You know, 50 different times the woman can have CPS called on her, and if it's unfounded, nothing's wrong. But then all of a sudden, if the dad says one thing or does one thing, it's like, oh, by the way, you can't see your kid. Yeah, and that's see, that's why like I'm 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 kind of holding my tongue, only because you know what? And is am I fucking depressed? Yes, I'm very depressed. And am I fucking pissed off and I'm upset? Yes, I'm pissed off and I'm upset. But you know, I'm trying to just keep the peace for the time being because there's nothing I can do that will you know saying like nothing I can do right now that'll change change what's going to happen and what kills me is that like you know when the mother when the mother was fucking shooting heroin and smoking crack you know saying you weren't right, you weren't right. you weren't kept from your fucking kid so i know this is all going to blow over. This is going to be a waste of time and energy. You know, but you're going to have to go through whatever happens. I have to go through blah, the fucking blah, blah. rigmarole and get a fucking lawyer yeah, and get all this sucks. bullshit. So that is just, I mean, you know, and you would think for someone who has fucked up in her life so much as my daughter's mother has, you know what I'm saying, being a drug addict for all these years, ruining people's lives, you know, you would think she'd be a bit more forgiving, but... You know, so say la vie. So is the world. You know, happy, happy four year anniversary for the podcast. <laughs> um, so you know, and I just want to say, like, okay, on Facebook and stuff like that. You know, I bust your chops. You know, I've been, I've been doing a whole I hate Paul t- <laughs> T-shirt campaign. But you know, oh, by the way, I am going to make a shirt. It's called <laughs> "Sucks to Be Sucks to Be Chris" because you're not going to get to see Young Justice versus Justice League now. Oh uh, well, and I of, actually have it. And I was going to give it to you. Of all the but fucking, no, but no, no, you can't see it. You made a little T-shirt. <laughs> and Paul oh. is poking me with his with, with an antenna right now. With my manhood. But you get you get like all these you get all these fucking early release DVDs of which then like you send out to somebody else to do reviews when, you know, like I'm right here. You don't have to put it in the mail. I will come. You don't have to put it in a fucking mailbox. Like you can just like lay it outside your door, and I will fucking come and you know the son of Batman. Uh, Batman, uh, bad man, bat blood, bad blood. Uh, you got all these fucking great DVDs, you know, uh, early releases or whatever, and fucking don't even. Even if the review, It'll like, okay. even if the person <laughs> reviews it, you know, I know you send it to um Mike uh, uh, Agnostelli, Augustinelli, Augustinelli, whatever the fuck his name. Gonna keep your ass. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Uh, but you know, you send it to Mike, but shit, tell Mike to send it back, man. I mean, of course, yeah, I can go and I could probably just rent it from Redbox or something like that. I've been, I've been, I have been, I mean, I thank goodness I'm in a better mood right now. I mean, I've been fucking through a lot of shit. But like, when I go to the library, I've been like, I've been doing the whole like getting DVDs from the library. So I just recently got, um, now at, at Comic Con, I had gotten this shirt for this show called Broad City on, on Comedy Central. I've never seen it. I heard of it, but I didn't know much about it. I got season one. You know, I went to the library and rented it out, or, you know, borrowed it or whatever you want to call it. And the show's fucking hilarious. So, you know, and so now I could, act, but the shirt doesn't fit me. It obviously doesn't fit me, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing a video with the shirt. <laughs> like wearing it like this weird, stretched, super tight fucking shirt that says broad fucking city on it. That's what it literally says. Um, You've but, lost your mind. So you? I apologize. I, not that I apologize. And that's the whole thing is that, like, I tease, but, like, I tease the people that, like, I care about. Like, people who I don't like are the people I'm respectful to. You know what I'm saying? Like, my customers who I fucking can't stand and I wish would fucking get hit. Uh, I wish every one of my customers would get hit with a fucking, hit by a fucking truck. No, please tell me how you really feel. <laughs> but, you know, and those are the people I say, yes, please, and thank you, and sir. The people I no, tease. No, it's more like, yes, please. <laughs> 
Have a nice day. Yeah, yes. In, in, in translated terms, yes, please means go fuck yourself. But um, oh, I mean, I've, yeah. had, I've had all sorts of customers that just sit there and oh, you're racist or um, well, I don't want you to report this, but then I'm going to complain about it because you didn't report this. Well, I just asked you like 50 different times. It takes two seconds to fill out a, a injury report. No, I don't want to do that. And then you complain to corporate. Well, that's not the same, but okay. Yeah. Oh, speaking of work. Um, so I'm still, you know, I'm at, I'm at the new store. And somehow, by default, I've landed being a low man on the totem pole, working these fucking overnight shifts. And so my boss is, you know, I don't know if he's maybe he's like trying to make some sort of power play, like, because the old, the guy who was doing the overnights left to another store. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Paul is farting over your people. A gas chamber, the basement. But um, so, Revenge. so uh, the guy that the guy who used to work at our store, he's transferring to another store because they're doing like a remodel. And then basically, once the remodel's over with, he's retiring. So you know, me being the low man on the totem pole, boom, I get all you know his position, which I didn't ask for. And back when I when I sent the emails from my old store asking. Letting him know my availability hours, I did not put overnights. I put 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. But who gets stuck with overnights? Me, the fucking kid. So when I say kid, I mean I'm not the kid, but you know, I, I always felt I've always felt like the kid in whatever job I have. You know, I'm fucking 38 yeah. years old. Always, I've always felt like the kid. So they stick me in overnight. So I'm like, all right, fine. But like the stuff that they're expecting me to do is just way too fucking much. You know, I, the the people that I relieve in the afternoon yeah, yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like as soon as I walk in the door, I'll come in, I'll do with whoever supervisor in the afternoon is. They'll give me the rundown of what I need to know and then walk out the door. Even though they're scheduled for another half an hour or even some people that have been scheduled for fucking another hour and a half will just straight up leave. Because it's like, oh, Chris is here. Okay. You know, oh, Chris got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, And that sucks. I hate that being like... I, I am a relatively reliable person, like especially at work. I'm the kind of person like, okay, you don't have to worry because I'm here, but that doesn't mean you can leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you know, I, I I pride myself on being on the kind of person like, oh, Chris is here, so I don't have to repeat myself, or I don't have to. If I know Chris said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. But these people have gotten to the point where like, oh, Chris is here. Oh, well, then that means I can just fucking go. You know? Right. So that fucking sucks balls because I walk into work and you know. And, you know, like I said, I've transferred to a store that's in a metropolitan part of town. We get tons of we get tons of people. It's obviously a 24-hour store. And, you know, on a Friday night or a Saturday night where people are buy- out buying beer and stuff like that, oh, you know, there's a fucking – there's always a crowd. You know, I'm not a cashier, but when the cashiers need – you know, when the line gets more than, like, three or four people, they need someone to come and back them up. So I have, like, 50 responsibilities that I have to get – shit I have to get done – and put in the computer before midnight, which is damn near impossible. It's hard enough as it is, not to mention when the people need help, you know, like my cashiers need help, or heavens forbid a customer calls and says you need something, or if I'm, if, even if I'm on the floor and a customer, you know, the, the, you know, corporate policy dictates that whatever the fuck I'm doing is supposed to come second to the customer. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to go, right. oh, you know, I, I'm too busy. Go fuck, you know, go fuck yourself. Which you know, so many times you want. Like, when someone walks in the door and says, oh, where's so-and-so? Where's this? Where's this? Go fucking look in the store. There's... I love it because sometimes people ask me stuff and I'll literally, like, just look up and read the signs and go, oh, what you need is an aisle 14 or whatever. Like, asshole, you could have did that. I do that on purpose to kind of let people know, like, you could have did that yourself. You could have opened your fucking eyes look for two seconds and see that whatever you need is an aisle 14 or whatever. So... Uh, you know, I got a million fucking things I got to do, and not to mention that I got to go. I got to do all the shit because it's got to get done before midnight because it's got to be in the computer before midnight because it counts as that day, and you know all this other bullshit. So, you know, and I just straight up like while we're recording this, like as soon as we're done recording this, I'm going to work. I'm going to be working a night shift, and it's like I'm gonna. I'm now I'm bracing myself for the repercussions of you know how dare I fucking say you know, uh, you know that. Not that I said I'm not going to do it. It's just like, you know, give me a fucking break. You know, I, you know, I'm trying to get everything done that you want me to get done. You know, I got to I got to well, do. Well, I mean, you're part of the union, too. I, I would say something. Well, no, I mean, that's, I, I mean, I don't think I, they can't fire me because I'm trying to do my job. Yes. I, like and I, and I definitely said I'm not going to do it. But I basically said fucking lay off. Me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let me try, you know, you know. And then, like I said, how, how the fuck am I supposed to get shit done? 
if everybody else oh chris so i'm being now once again i'm being held to a different standard oh you're supposed to get this done but all these other people can leave early these other fucking you know people can just bounce whenever the fuck they feel like it and you know and now mind you when i was at my old store people from the store that i work at now came to my old store before i transferred there and they i was warned about the bad morale i was warned about you know the people people i work with that are fucking lazy and shit so, and I, you know, I, and quite frankly, I mean, I don't think anybody in, that I work with would listen to the podcast, but if they did, I don't give a fuck. They're lazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're leaving before you're fucking. And it's not like, I could understand if like, if you left a half an hour early because you didn't take lunch, like you said, like, oh, you know, I didn't have lunch today. You know, things are so busy. I didn't go to lunch. So I'm going to go to half an hour early. No, these people took lunch. And, and the thing, they hate their job so fucking much <laughs> that they're losing a half an hour of pay just to walk out the door because they don't want to deal with the bullshit. So that shows you the kind of mentality of the fucking people that I'm working with. And so, you know, that's got me stressed the fuck out. You know, you know I'm not looking forward to going to work tonight. Right. And, you know, uh, part, of, part of the issue, like with my daughter or whatever, is I do got to find, I do have to find, a one bedroom, two bedroom apartment, you know, where I, you know, right now I live in a loft and, you know, I got two fucking twin size beds, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's, that's how I'm living right now. And it's like, I make too much for public assistance. They, you know, not for, I, I don't get, you know, okay. I get covered in Medicaid and quite frankly, I only go to, I would only go to the hospital right now if I needed emergency care, you know? Um, right. So I can, so my medical's covered. But I don't get I don't get dime one when it's, you know, oh, yeah, my daughter's mother could talk all this shit about, you know, oh, you have a small apartment, small apartment. Um, yeah, because I'm not like you and I don't have fucking three, three different kids and three different men and fucking co- collect fucking, uh, you know, welfare that will pay your fucking rent. Yeah. You know, so, you know, yeah, I would have a nicer house if the government gave me a couple bucks to fucking, you know, so, you know, this is all coming out of, this is all coming out of well, my pocket. I don't know. have fucking Wi-Fi. I don't have cable. I don't drive a nice car. You know, I don't, I don't have any fucking, I don't have any, um, uh, what's the word? I don't have any like bad habits. You know what I'm saying? I don't drink. I don't do drugs. None of, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm do I'm trying to do everything I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to do and I'm still getting fucked in the process, you know? And it's like. You know, so I'm looking for an apartment, and I don't know if it's because it's the middle of the month, or 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 anything like that. I I've been, you go, you know, you go on Craigslist and you look for places that you could afford, and you know, and of course they're all. The one guy that calls me back, he goes, okay, uh, and then he goes, oh, but it's not available until the middle of next month, and he goes, and basically he says he's kicking out the people who live there. So he goes, okay, you know, if you want, drive down the street, I'll give you the address and look at, you know, check it out. So night now that the nice weather is now it's nice weather this is the i noticed when i when i bought my house in jersey the woman selling me the house always insisted that we go look at the house at eight o'clock in the morning why because fucking low lives don't fucking hang out at eight o'clock in the morning yeah i learned that the fucking hard way I, now i learned that if you're gonna check out an apartment you're gonna go check out somewhere you live check it out six seven eight o'clock in the, in the evening you know don't go where, where and wouldn't you know it the fucking place that you're by has fucking just guys chilling outside, sitting on the steps or whatever. Now, I they might have been from the apartment that that are people that are leaving, but it was, I wasn't about to stop in that. But of the whole fucking block <laughs> that I drove, the one fucking place that had fucking homeboys sitting out front was the fucking place that I was looking at. So, you know, it, it sucks. It really fucking sucks that, you know. And then, you know, there's other places, <clears throat> other par- apartments that you look interesting or you're curious about. And people just... You know what I'm saying? I must have contacted like five. I must have left like five different uh, phone messages. I must have left two different emails. You know, in one day, just trying to you know, just trying to get myself geared up for, you know, nothing. Nobody called. Me. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, or you know, you would think like if you put out a Craigslist ad or whatever. Um, I even checked Zillow. Zillow's a, a website about like real estate. You would think uh, they would at least answer back, or at least if you found someone that's going to take the place, take the fucking list. You know, take the the ad down. So no one's calling me back. I'm fucking pissed off about it. The best time to do it is like 8 a.m. when they're coming in and just be like, look, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. Give me some information. Let me go see it and then, you know, be done with it. Yeah. Because the one the one guy that called me back was just, and then and it's so frustrating because a lot of these people, like you go on Craigslist and they're like, and the ad will say, leave a message. You know, if you don't, if no one picks up, leave a message, which means leave a message. It's, you know, you know, they, they're not going to, they're screening their calls. So you go and then the person calls you back and it's always 
someone with a heavy fucking accent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always, you know, some guy I could barely fucking understand. You do know, you want to go? do you want to talk about it? Yeah, you know, some guy, you know, make, living the American dream, fucking, you know, coming to this country, buying property or whatever, <laughs> you know. And and you would think like, you know, I, once again, I hate to say like, you know, be, you know, I, let's be real here. You hear my voice. I'm obviously not. <laughs> You're, not, you're white. I'm, I'm white for all intents and purposes. <laughs> I'm white. Where's that white privilege everyone keeps talking about? Because it ain't fucking helping me. You know, you would think like... Le- well, that's the thing. Like, what they want is... It's kind of funny because if a white person owns, an, owns like, a, a house, mm-hmm. 90% of the time they don't want anything to do with DHS or mm-hmm. anything like that because they don't think they get the money. But if it's a foreign person, like, oh, yeah, I want the DHS. It's like, what? Yeah, I don't understand. Section I don't 8. And, yeah. Oh, and, you know, but you see these ads that say no Section 8, no no housing or whatever. And I'm like, no, I pay my, you know, and, and I tell people when I leave a message, I say, I'm a supervisor at the store that I work at. Um, you know, and then I also just, and I, I don't know if this is, I do, I, once again, I don't know if, it, you know, I do need a, a one bedroom or a two bedroom because I'm, and my daughter stays with me two nights out of the week, you know, because I've noticed a lot of people ask that, like, who's staying in the house? Who's with you? Like me, I'm primarily the person living there, but I need, you know, my, my daughter will be staying with me two nights out of the week or three nights out of the week. Right. So that's been a fucking pain in the ass. And then on top of that, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm just bitching people. And look, it, it, be happy that I'm here bitching about it on the podcast instead of fucking, you know, fucking in my bed, dead fucking pills Sun down my throat. throat. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I think Paul, I think you do have a set of keys. So if you don't hear from me from a couple of days, fuck, <laughs> come check my apartment. But no, but like, uh, you know, and we were talking about this before the podcast. My state tax return came, of which they gave me. What is it like a fifth, a tenth, or whatever? Like I got nothing of what I was supposed to get, and you're going through this. And I was talking to another uh, male co- uh, coworker of mine. He's going through this also, where all of us uh, count for the non-custodial parent uh, earned income tax break. earned income tax break, which I got last year, no problem. Well, and, I had the I had the same problem last year too. Oh, last year I got I had no problem whatsoever. Last year I went through fine, and actually my my coworker that I spoke to. That told me about his situation. Told me the exact same thing. He got no. He had no problem last year also because him and him and I actually spoke about it last year. Because I, I was like, I told him, I said, "Did you get? The, I got this thing in the mail telling me about the earned income non custodial parent thing." And I'm like, "Did you get it?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, I got it. Oh, I got it." So then him and I are talking this year, and he didn't get it originally. And in his situation, now when I get my taxes, I have it going directly to my bank account, direct deposit. He didn't get a direct deposit, but I guess. They changed their mind, or they did a review, or something like that. I don't know exactly. They're supposed, what to, they're supposed to review it, yeah. And he got a thing in the mail. Basically, it was his money, but it was on debit card. It actually says New York State, and I've seen those cards before. They're kind of like they look like a scenic mountain view, or whatever, on a fucking debit card. Which I don't care. Like my thing is, you're holding now. I did a little homework or whatever, and it turns out I, I owe child support like fifty three dollars because there was like a month when I, when I fought the child support thing. That they actually said, I don't have to pay child support for that month or whatever. And then all of a sudden, I guess they decided, oh, now you do owe it. You know, like uh, paying some retro fucking child support. And it was like 53 bucks or whatever. So it's like, oh, so I can get my whole tax return because of $53? How about do this? Take the $53 out of what I'm supposed to get and let me get my fucking money. So, you know, I'm looking for a place, you know, and, and right now, like, you know, I'm really trying my best to kind of limit the money that I'm spending. And you would think, okay, you know, you know, once again, even if I found a place and yeah, I could probably fucking, you know, I, I'm looking for a place, but it'd be nice if I had another, another little cushion of money there to fucking, you know, okay, here's, you know, got to right. pay the first month's rent. You got to pay the month's deposit. You got to pay. And I can't wait to leave the place that I'm at right now because, you know, they've, they've been ever since it went under new management, like they've been, you know, they don't fucking answer any emails. They don't answer any phone calls. They don't, you know, as I go to, I went to go check out the, the manager's office. It's not a manager's office. It's like a mailbox, et cetera, yep. kind of place. So I'm, I like, I can't wait to fucking leave the place that I'm staying at right now. So uh, <laughs> just bitching. Okay. Let's talk about other things. I cheated on you last episode. I'm sorry, but you know, it was, you know, a, a cool fucking dude, Robert Dean. He's a writer. Uh, he wrote a book called The Red Seven. Check out the last episode if you haven't already, or if you're new to this episode. If you're new to this episode from uh, from being a friend of Robert Dean's, uh, check it out. It is a fucking awesome book. 
Uh, but I cheated on you again. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you, but like you do the tsunami favor podcast. I don't give a shit about that. So like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not cheating because I'm doing that. Before you're doing you. that before, yeah. We're, we're in an open relationship. No, but it, no, it's you know, and I and it's so funny because I've actually like. I, the funny thing is I download the episodes, but I don't really, like, listen to them. But I, I something in me recently have just said, fuck it, just go listen to the pod. And it's so funny just listening to stuff that I have no idea what the fuck. <laughs> you know, like, oh, and we're talking about Dimension W this this week and Parasite and, and, and Hunter Hunters or, or Hunted Hunters. Or, and I'm like, and it's so funny because I have no fucking idea what you guys are talking about. But, I mean, you know, I grew up around people that are, like, into anime and shit like that. So, like, I, I get it. But it's obviously stuff that I don't follow, or you know. I mean, I mean, you won't live past this podcast, but it's fine. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying, and it's so funny because like so many of my, so many people that I'm friends with on Twitter are p- friends that I've made through like the Tanami Faithful podcast. And I had said one day, you know, and as a joke, I said, like, just imagine one day if I went on Twitter and I deleted every account that was an anime character. You know, because everybody on Twitter who's into anime tends to have an anime character yeah. as their as their as their avatar. And I'm like, if I did that, I'd probably stop following half the fucking people I follow. <laughs> and heavens forbid you go on Twitter on Saturday night when Tsunami's actually on, because Jesus Christ, everybody's talking about every fucking thing. Oh, Which, of course. You know, I get it. It's it is what it is, and and so you know. But like, like now, like it is funny listening to because I kind of want to check out Dimension W now. I, I kind of want to oh, check yeah. out. Oh, oh, really? I kind of want to check out Parasite now. You know, now that I hear like the rundowns and shit like that, so. Um, and so, of course, check out Paul's other baby, the Tsunami Faithful podcast. Yeah, fucking straight. <laughs> <laughs> so we're recording this on 420, the four four year anniversary of the podcast. But uh, just yesterday was the primaries in New York State, Damn which straight. you know, which basically means like what they got like California to do, right? Is, have they done California? Yet no, or California no? is doing something. So, so long story short, they're almost done with the important states. <laughs> So, um, you know, yeah, we I love have, how like Bernie Sanders is like, oh yeah, I won seven out of eight in a row, and I'm like, yeah, you won seven unimportant states out of eight in a row. I, I like, and, and once again, this is, I mean, me and Paul talk before the podcast, and stuff gets regurgitated here, but I honestly, I thought, in my, I thought, I thought Bernie Sanders was going to fucking sweep New York, and boy, was I wrong. Um, you know, I, I thought, you know, OK, you know, because, well, yeah, okay, Hillary so... was our senator and, and, and Hillary, you know, she, uh, uh, they live up in Chappaqua, which is like north of New York City, uh, you know, and, and Hill, you know, Bill Clinton had has his offices on 125th Street in Manhattan, you know. But Hillary's not from New York. Like, there are people who are like, don't fucking say she's from stop. PA. She's actually from PA. I think. Yeah. Like people like stop. Like when she when she even said she goes home sweet home or some shit like that, you know people are like stop saying home when this isn't your home. Now I mean that's a little rough, but I mean you know but she has worked for the state. But I thought you know Bernie, <laughs> I you know, just I mean just from I you know I've I, I've seen more Bernies in New York than I've seen Hillarys. You know what I'm saying? Like Bernard Bernard Sanders well, looks uh, like okay. a guy. It looks like me, guys that I know or guys that I grew up with or or the or the me, fathers of the friends of mine. Well, so, let, let me talk about that a little <laughs> bit because you know I, I think it goes to this point of something that I saw on and I use this site called RealClearPolitics.com. It's a very mm-hmm. good site. Uh, it actually takes an average of all the polls, and then it keeps like an average of what it is. And they're they're, they're pretty good. Like I mean, I think she won New York by like fifteen points, maybe, and they they predicted about eleven. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's not too far off. But um, one of the articles that they had, I can't remember where it was, mm-hmm. uh, which which site or whatever. But and I actually think I have it up on my Facebook page. Um, she they 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 were talking about how there's this silent. Uh, voter, there's these silent voters that are voting for Hillary because a lot of people are like, I don't want Bernie fans to know that I'm a really Clinton. Well, yeah, yeah, supporter. exactly. It's, yeah, because not and forget about it. You go on Facebook now. I'll do the occasional political post, yeah. but I don't do it too often. You know, you know, you have certain friends on Facebook. You when I say you, I mean us in general. You know, you have some people that every post is fucking political. Heavens forbid. Yeah. You fucking aren't for now. I, I'm very. Know. I've been very political lately, but I still don't. 
have that's not my whole thing. Yeah, exactly. I you know part of, like I you know I keep my mouth shut about certain things. Like if I'm going to say something, I'm going I'm goofing on everybody. Like I made a post a couple days ago, like where I kind of goofed on everybody. Where I can goof on everybody. Like, if I just... Or, or, I mean, Trump... Okay, yeah, Trump is an easy punching bag, so I'll goof on Trump. But, like, you know, I, when I make a post like that, it's not... I'm not instigating a fucking fight. How about, how about that one... There's a video up on Facebook now where uh, Trump's... They have somebody dressed up as Trump. He's in a 7-Eleven. And because he said... Instead 7-Eleven. of 9-11, he said 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. And nobody stopped. <laughs> I, like, you would think people would be like... Like you think, hey, me nine eleven. You know, you would think people would holler up in that video. No, nobody said anything. Like no one came out. No one corrected him. I, it shows you. I mean, you know, obviously he's look. One thing you do got to say about Trump followers, uh, his his hardcore supporters, is they're fucking loyal. They didn't even bother to correct him. <laughs> well, and, and I think see, here's the problem with Trump supporters. They think that it's. They think that basically Trump is um, the savior that's going to come and save the party. Or not not so much save the party, but save the country. And I'm sitting there going, where in your right mind do you <laughs> fucking think that Trump gives a sh- two shits about you? Mm-hmm. He's going because he wants to be president of the United States. Mm-hmm. That's all. He doesn't care about anybody else. And the minute he goes in the office, he's just going to be like fucking George, George Bush. He's just going to, the second one. He's going to sit there back in his chair and be like, I'm just gonna jerk off over here. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's like, like it's like it's like people like trying to guess who like uh, Lex Luthor's uh, motivation in Batman v Superman. Like, why is he trying to stop? He's trying to stop Superman because he wants to control the fuck. He wants to control the world. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's saying like Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't care about your fucking votes. He just wants to fucking uh, you know. He just wants to have. Well, and I think he's trying top. to destroy the Republican Party too. Is I think what he's trying to do because and he's doing a good fucking job of it. I mean, when you got when you got the Speaker of the House coming out. Like several different times and saying, if they vote me in at the convention to be president, I'm not going to take it. Like that's some serious shit right <laughs> there. Like that's some serious shit. But like what, what happened? What happened yesterday is, and a lot of people will bitch about this is, you know, if you look at the whole state, it's pretty much Bernie Sanders. But here's the problem: Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse, and then obviously Long Island and New York City. There, they all went to Hillary Clinton. Those are the high population areas. Mm-hmm. But they all, they all, especially like Bronx County. Holy shit! They just seventy-two percent of people voted for Hillary in, Bron- in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. Like, holy shit! They destroyed Bernie. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I thought it was the Bronx that it was, and it was the Brooklyn. It was Brooklyn. So I, I, I said that by mistake. But I still find that hilarious. That you know, he goes down there and he spent a long time down in that area. Uh, trying to get voters, and they're yeah. just like, "Fuck you!" And he's, <laughs> and, and, you know, and 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 I believe I could I could be wrong here. Of his entire campaign, the largest groups of his supporters were in New York. I, I believe they said like twenty seven thousand people came out to one of his rallies. Oh yeah, no, and, they've been huge. Rallies. And and you know, no other state has shown him that kind of. Love, for the lack of a better term. That's why I thought he was going to do well in New York, because it's like, well, and, and all I these think, people showed up, but, but obviously... I, I, think, I think what the problem is, is, one, what, what is, what's happening is, is the, these loud Bernie Sanders supporters are like, yeah, I'm going to go out and vote for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't come out and vote, yeah. number one. Number two, they don't follow the rules, and they don't register to be anything, so mm-hmm. they can't. And, you know, there are some states out there that let you register on that day, mm-hmm. but we're not one of them. And it, and it would be well, too much chaos to do that. Well, well I mean, you could. I mean, there, there were people because I saw it in the news. I mean, but it's a it's a whole thing where you have to. No, 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 no. You can't. Uh, you, under can get, you can do an affidavit. No, there's a thing called affidavit. Oh it's no, no. Affidavit that, what that is? No, no, no. What that is is what happened to it. There, there was a guy. I think it was on 13 where mm-hmm. they said uh, what happened with him was is he was a he was a registered Democrat, mm-hmm. and for some odd reason his name didn't appear in the book. So mm-hmm. what they did is they let him fill out a uh, that affidavit, mm-hmm. and he was still able to vote. Mm-hmm. But it was because they couldn't find his name. What happens is is when you're a registered Democrat or registered Republican, they have this book of names, mm-hmm. and you have to go to that site where your book where your name is. Mm-hmm. So like my site was over on Lehigh Station Road in Henrietta, so I went over there. I went. I they found my name. Boom! I voted. I, well, I had to help a lady find my name. Well, yeah, what the? But, f- oh my God! Every and not to cut you off. Look, I love democracy, and and maybe this is my. It's me kind of maybe because I've been in such a funk or whatever. 
the people at these fucking polling places are fucking idiots Dumb and fucks. morons. And it's one of those. It's sort of like jury duty. Like, why you know? Why would you want someone to be part of a jury when well, they're and, too and, stupid to get out of jury duty? And, and I understand. I understand what was wrong is because my my name is kind of because it, it kind of matches. It matches up with what it says on my driver's license, which is last name, first name, middle initial, and then I have. A suffix at the end because I'm the second, not the first. Mm-hmm. So I guess that was the part of the problem that was the, that was there. But I saw my name. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's my name right there. Well, I recognize my signature. Well, but you're like, I had to do this. You had to do this. A friend of mine on Facebook was kind of told the same story. Like, why is it? You know, why I can I look at the page and I'm, in my particular situation, my name happened to be the, like on the bottom of the page. And so the guy's looking and I'm and like I'm look I'm standing right there. I said it's at the bottom of the page. Like, none of, you know, and not to disparage anybody over the age of 60, but no one in that, no one in that polling place, all the volunteers, the people that were kind of running shit, was, was under the age of 60. And, you know, not to, you know, and, and I mean, I don't think we have too many over 60 listeners. I think just my dad is the only person over 60 to listen to this podcast. But, um, you know, and then like it's right there. It's right there in the book. I can see it from here. It's my, yeah. sir, my, my last name. That's my that's my name on the bottom of the page. Oh, there you are. Then he flips around, whatever. And then, like, you know, I can only imagine that when you actually vote, because we had I had the one that was like that long piece of paper, mm-hmm. and then you put it in a folder, yeah. and then you bring it over to the thing, and then you kind of slide it into the computer, and. You know, luckily, I guess it it, it lets the because it was per, there was a person standing there. I guess they're sort of monitor. They could look at that says success because on my and then on my end it said success. But I mean, like was, these people also had to set up a computer. <laughs> so this guy couldn't fucking find my name on the bottom of a page of what? There's maybe like ten names on the page. You know, yeah, this guy had a one out of ten shot of finding it, and I read. I found my name upside down. <laughs> And 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 you know someone else had to set up a fucking computer. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. Like, I, I think that you know, and, and that I was talking about this before the podcast. Like, there was a lot of older people there, and I automatically went, "All right, this is going to be Hillary County." Yeah, exactly. If Bernie, if if Bernie's uh, constituency is going to be younger people, and the younger people didn't come out. Then they did him a disservice because yeah. you know it's they should have come and, out. And don't get me wrong to my to my friends out there that are independents. I understand that you wanted to vote yesterday, and you tr- some people actually tried to go and vote. Guys, you can't. Like you need to be either Republican or Democrat. It's not my fault that you wanted to go and be an independent, but yet I vote Democrat anyways. Like shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like ninety percent of the time, independents vote with Democrats. Mm-hmm. So. Why are we even having this conversation? Yeah. You fucked up. It's your fault, not mine. And then, like, one thing that's that's odd, and this, I mean, it's not, it's this isn't the first time I voted in Rockchester. I've been up here for about five years. The fact that, and once again, it's just, it, it, this is just the primary. You know, saying, like, yeah. yes, it's important, but it's not that important. But uh, the fact that our voting areas didn't open until noon, that's kind yeah. of weird. That's that like, was a little weird. Like, it's like, um, you know, New York City, it's like 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. In Rochester, well, it was it, noon to 9 p.m. I guess it turned off a lot of people because they couldn't vote in the morning. But honestly, like, I, I think that I, I didn't really care. Mm-hmm. But, well, I, that's the whole thing. Like, you if, know. if you're if you're someone and you just work the fucking eight-hour day, do you want to go and stand? Now, luckily, I went to my voting area around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So did I. And I was kind of like, the funny thing was like, it was right by a school, right by my daughter's school, <laughs> right by my daughter's school, coincidentally. Um, and so I'm like, oh, shit. Everyone's, the whole fucking world is out right now because it's 3 o'clock, all the school buses and everything. And I said, I'm going to be fucking standing online and I'm going to be like, you know. I mean, I would have stood there because I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have my daughter, right. so I might as well stand there. But I could see how people get discouraged and like, fuck that. I'm not going to wait 45 minutes to fucking vote. But, um, you know, you know, for people, like, if you couldn't vote before work, then all of a sudden, you know, you just worked an eight-hour day. You just got to get home or something. You know, maybe, maybe some people, you do have to just get, you have to go pick up your kid. You know, it's not like you could drag your kid to the polling area, which technically you could. But, I mean, you know, you don't want to go, you know, it's a fucking headache and a hassle. And all this other bullshit. So, uh, I don't know. It just, it doesn't seem fair that in Rochester you had to wait till noon. But, like I said, I mean, I guess it's just the yeah, primary. Yeah, that long to vote, right? That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I was lucky, you know, once again, I was, you know, at least I was 
open-eyed enough where I found my name before the fucking guy did. Um, <laughs> you well, know, it took me, it, like... It could have been worse. It didn't even take me ten minutes. Yeah. I was in and out. There was no line. I was, I was like, I, I kind of went... I was kind of like, wait a minute. So, this was that quick. And so, it makes me wonder if other states are just like, I don't really give a shit. We're only going to have, like, one station per county or something. Mm-hmm. Because if it went that fast... And I'm sure that it, it, even when people got out of work, it probably there probably wasn't that many lines. Mm-hmm. Like, if it was like that, why is it being like long lines at other places? And, and the only thing I can come up with is these assholes don't know how to, it's worse than other states. Yeah. Our state, I mean, I think that we did a good job other than the 120 people, 120,000 people that couldn't vote. But, you know, it is what it is, so. Yeah. So I think with that, we'll be back with more Dig and Fart Jokes. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane-refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click-the-letter-n-hit.com. That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. And we're back. Okay, here I have right on the very top of my list and top of the nerdy news and something you told me to leave her alone. And I'm saying, fuck Amy Schumer. I've said it before. <laughs> I'll say it again. Fuck her. She's not funny. It's not, and trust me, this isn't, I just spoke about, before the first part of the show, I spoke about the show Broad City. You know what I'm saying? I, I dig Amy Poehler, I dig Rachel Dratch, um, I have nothing against, I'm not one of those people like, oh, female Ghostbusters is gonna suck. I'm not, I'm a misogynist, but I'm not that kind of misogynist. I don't find Amy, Amy Schumer funny. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't, you can't hate on Amy Schumer. She's Senator Schumer's cousin. Sen- Oh, Chuck Schumer? Yeah. Okay, well, that doesn't that doesn't change anything. She's not funny. The, okay, you know, let's let's go back into the history. The only okay, we she she got she came up in the Comedy Central roasts. And the only reason she came up in the Comedy Central it was it was two factors. One, she was banging uh Jesselneck. I forgot his first name. The Jesselneck guy. Yeah. He's one of the main writers for those roasts on Comedy Central. And he has pull and he has sway. So she was fucking him at the time. Which was sort of like the same reason... Uh, uh, what's that other broad from... Um, uh, the one that was fucking Jimmy Kimmel. Sarah Silverman. Yeah. So the only reason Sarah Silverman was famous because she was blowing fucking... She was fucking Jimmy Kimmel at the time. But Amy Schumer, and, and I don't want to sound like one of those guys, like, oh, she's only, she only has a career because she was fucking him. But this is sort of real. I'm not saying this because I hate women or something like that. No, this is real. She was only, she only got the job because she was fucking, I want to say his name is Andy Jesselnecker or whatever, but whatever. whatever. Jesselnecker. He doesn't matter. From the, from the Jesselnecker offensive and he was also on those shows. And then she was only there because Lisa, Lisa Lampanelli bowed out. Lisa Lampanelli decided, and now mind you, she's, Lisa Lampanelli has kind of changed her, Whole shtick, you know. She used to, now. Now don't be wrong. When Lisa Lampanelli was doing those those roasts and doing that style of like offensive, because she's changed her act. She's she's gone more 
let me be funny as opposed to me not being hack because she was doing real hack shit like you know all the black guys and you know and i only fuck black guys and 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 black guys don't have jobs and oh the mexican guys is only does your lawn like she was doing like so hacky shit and she was not funny back then i don't think lisa lampin was funny back then she's kind of changed her she actually she lost a lot of weight and now she's doing you know now she's changed her act because i do think she's genuinely funny because i've heard her on like on um you know, she's done like like the Opie and Anthony show and stuff like that, and and Howard Stern, and and uh, a couple times, and here in Rochester, the Brother Wee show. She's a genuinely funny person, and I think she finally woke up and said, "Let me stop doing this hack, fucking you know, old black guys are lazy, Mexicans are gardeners, you know, Hispanic people are fucking, we all carry knives on, and you know, <laughs> shit like that." Like she kind of left that hacky shit behind, and now she's trying to be, she's broadening her horizons. When she was doing the hacky shit, she wasn't funny, but she decided all of a sudden to stop doing those roasts, which is kind of at that point was kind of stupid because that's the only reason people knew Lisa Lampanelli was from those fucking roasts. So Amy Schumer only came up because one she was blowing fucking one, she was blowing one of the guy the main head writers, and and because <sighs> somebody else bowed out. You know I don't think she's funny. I don't think she's sexy. A lot of my a lot of my guy friends are like, oh she'd get it she'd get it. Not for nothing, and, and it's not because I'm la- not for the lack of trying. If I I can I think I can go on fucking OK Cupid and get a girl that looks like Amy Schumer. You know, like I think I can, I can go on a dating site. There's a million girls who look like Amy Schumer. Should we you know take that challenge? <laughs> right. I'm just saying is I don't, I don't think she's attractive. I mean, am I, and I'm not hating on big girls because, because you know, she, you know, I've, you know, I was married to a big woman. I was married, you know, I, I'm not hating on. I'm just saying is that if anything, she's best at average. She looks like, uh, she looks like. Uh, the middle Brady sister, you know, oh, <laughs> Marsha, God. Marsha, Marsha. Uh, <laughs> not Cindy Brady. Cindy Brady was the youngest, not Marsha. Uh, whatever. She looks like the middle Brady sister. <laughs> the opinions of Chris. Oh, grown up. I don't. I don't think she's attractive, and I don't think she's funny. And you know, and once again, maybe I've never seen an episode of Inside Amy Schumer. So maybe if I see that, maybe my opinion will change of her. You know, but she has that whole like. I, I caught like I saw like one sketch on like. I don't know what I don't know where the hell I saw. It was like one sketch where she's like, and she was goofing on the fact that she tries to make herself so relatable, like, oh, I'm just a regular girl and I know about Star Wars and Superman and and you know and like all the guys in the audience were like coming on themselves or something like that. And it was, you know, and even then that's like so fucking crude and kind of hacky. So, you know, I don't I don't necessarily find her funny. So fucking. Well, well, okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Let me just put my two cents in here. First okay. of all, I think you're going a little too far with this, <laughs> but. Um, I mean, you had said that you tried to go get a ticket for her in Rush. Oh, oh no, like, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so what happened was, is on Twitter, I had gotten, like, one of those promoted tweets. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Amy Schumer is playing in Rochester. And she's playing the Blue Cross Arena, like, in the beginning of, like, May 7th. So, I get one of those promoted tweets. So, I said, sometimes, just out of pure curiosity, you'll click on a link. And, I mean, this is a legit link. You know, uh, it, you know, promoted Twitter uh, post. I click on it. Then they go, you know, and it takes you to like the. I want to say Ticketmaster, but don't quote me on that. Whatever, whatever yeah, ticket I'm gonna, site. I'm going to go to Twitter, Ticketmaster. Right now whatever ticket what site does. it said, and I said. So I said, let me just see. Let you know. Sometimes I had a pure fucking morbid curiosity. Check it out. So I hit just one seat because sometimes if you hit two seats, then you have to change your area because whatever. And you know, I put best available seat one. It's one hundred twenty-five dollars. Get the fuck out of here! I'm not paying on. And I mind you, they say one hundred twenty-five, and that's without. And once again, I want to say it's Ticketmaster. I'm ninety-nine point nine percent sure it's Ticketmaster, which you know that means there's another twenty dollars fee on top of that bullshit. You know, it's not one hundred twenty-five dollars and you're done. No, there's tax and fucking uh, uh, what's the word? Convenience fee, whatever fucking Ticketmaster right. charges. So fuck that shit. I'm not paying $125 to see someone fucking to be not a comedian, you know, or, or at least not not someone of Amy Schumer's caliber. I'm, you know, George Carlin when he was still alive, which you know I have seen George Carlin live. I've seen him like three times. You know, you can see my big giant head in the HBO special. Uh, you know, right. I've, I've seen him in Las Vegas when I was on my when I was on my honeymoon, and uh, you know, and I saw him at the other. Uh, I forgot the name of the the theater. 
it's on the top, on the tip of my tongue. But I've seen both his HBO shows that he did in New York City live. Even though, like I said, in one of the shows you could clearly see my big giant head. And then, um, like I guess I saw him in Vegas. And then I saw no, I saw him again. He, he played Queens College uh, down in, in New York City. So yeah, someone of a George Carlin's caliber. Or uh, let me see who who else. I don't, I don't even think I'd pay $125. I wouldn't see like a Louis C.K. Or um, who's, the, who's the guy with The Rock right now? Um, oh, uh, Kevin. Kevin. I wouldn't pay $125 to see Kevin Hart. I can't think of anybody. It's uh, for the seats in the upper section, uh-huh. which would probably weigh the fuck up there. Uh-huh. It's like $59 for ticket. Okay, $60. That's maybe because I hit best available and then it put like whatever cheapest. Yeah. But still, I'm not paying 125 dollars. Yeah, know, like even if maybe, I were to take if I were to take Kelsey, like that would it would be yeah like 59. So now you know, bucks. exactly if you bought two tickets, or then 130 you know 130 bucks. Yeah, yeah, 130 so, bucks. No plus plus Ticketmaster fee and all yeah. that other bullshit. Now you, now you are going back up to 150, 160 dollars. Not to mention parking. Not to mention if you want to get snacks when you're at the place. Not to mention that I'm pretty sure she's selling DVDs and T-shirts and other fucking paraphernalia at the end of the show. You know, so fuck. I don't, she, I don't think she's at that. Cal- at the the show. I don't think she's at that caliber to be charging. Even 59 dollars is, is, in my opinion, a lot to see her. Um, you know, and maybe that's just you know, maybe I sound like a hateful little fucking. Well, punk you are ass. a hateful little fuck. I'm, right, a, you know? I'm a hateful little punk ass bitch. But, <laughs> all right, you know, all right, let's move on. Just doing this. a podcast. Okay, so uh, other things: the Suicide Squad trailer. I did see that. Um, and I'm, I, I made this. I made this observation. Wait, wait, the minute, one word. One word. Swing. Swing. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I had made this observation. I've only heard it on one other podcast, but I I made this connection the the minute I saw it. Is in this trailer they're playing Ballroom Blitz. The first trailer uh, they played uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. So whoever's putting these trailers together, are obviously fans of Wayne's World, because you know they're they're, they're using uh, songs from the movie. You know, I, I mean, it could be just an incredible coincidence. Maybe maybe it's a thing that you know maybe like because a studio you know studios have access to the whole music library. They just you know Ballroom Blitz and Bohemian Rhapsody are probably under the same. You know what? I'm just you know you, Warner Brothers or whatever, but um, it looks really good. You know, I, I can't believe that they actually they're going back and reshooting scenes to make them more funny or whatever. Because I, I don't know if that that, that might have been just a rumor because they were. I guess the director came out and was like, "No, we didn't do that." Oh, okay. Because because I'm saying that like that trailer looks fun. It looks funny. It looks. I'm kind of. I'm actually kind of hoping that we get to see Ben Affleck a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot more than we think because it seems like he's <laughs> well. Somebody was making the the joke that like Batman's like, yeah, I want Harley Quinn, so I'm gonna take her away with me. <laughs> well, no, well, no, like, and I'll look. I'll put it like this, and this is maybe this the movie could have had no Batman. It could be even if let's just say. All we saw of Batman in the whole fucking movie is what we see in this trailer. We're like, let's just hypothetically, let's just put it like this. Let's just say they they play Batman up the way he's supposed to be played up, where Batman's just a fucking shadow, just glimpses of a cape and a cowl and shit like that. I I think this the trailer is done so well, in my opinion, that I don't care if Ben Affleck's in this movie. Right. You know what I'm saying? And not that not, don't be wrong, I think it would help. And you know, it's definitely not bad. I don't or think wrong. he's gonna be in it that much. I what I do think is is that um one thing that you notice with at least with the, the the animated Suicide Squad and then also not just the animated one, but um oh god, what was the other one? Um Well there there was something else that was Suicide Squad. Batman is always like there and he's being in, and really, what's happening is he's not only going after the bad guy that they're facing, but he's also like paying attention to what's going on because the problem is, is he doesn't like the Suicide Squad. Well, okay, now maybe maybe this is this is what I got from it. Maybe I'm wrong. I think Batman's only in this movie as in in um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like flashbacks. Yeah, because probably. because we obviously see him. Well, trying just, to save Har- Harley Quinn back yeah. when she's Harleen Quinzel. Um, then he's on top of the he's to- he's on top of the Joker's Lamborghini. I think these parts of the movie that we see Batman are supposed to be taken way before the movie ever starts out. Now and also and not for nothing, 
and maybe this is my maybe this is my mind playing tricks on me. He looks a lot slimmer. He looks he doesn't look as giant. And of course, yeah, I'm not talking about the big robot suit. I mean, just Batman in general doesn't look as as muscular as he does in Batman v Superman. So I don't know if this is supposed to be. I, I in my opinion, I think this is. I wouldn't be surprised if these are flashbacks where Batman caught them all. Like for them to be put in, in whatever well, probably, whatever jail and, and they're and in. I think that's what it, I do. Think that's a good point. Yeah, uh, I think that I do. I, I do think that it's mostly going to be flashbacks. But I also think that what happens is is you know obviously if Joker's there, Harley mm-hmm. Quinn's probably going to turn on them, mm-hmm. and you know Harley, you know, so the Joker is going to try to get away, and then you're going to see Batman show up, mm-hmm. you know, and we'll see. Yeah, see, we got that in the <laughs> too. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting. But speaking of Batman, I think we should spin this off, too. Uh, ben Affleck has been confirmed to be doing a solo Batman yeah, They confirmed something that was... It's so weird, like, you know, and it, I'm probably echoing something I've heard in another podcast. This is something we all kind of knew was happening. Well, I guess they finally, of, they finally confirmed of, it. We kind of knew, but we th- but it was a rumor. Yeah. And now it's actually confirmed that he's actually doing it, which has excited the whole world because, you know... Because um, even people who hated Batman v Superman yeah. are saying, "Okay, if Ben Affleck does the Batman, I mean, I'll be honest with then, you. Like, you know, I, seen, I might come back. You know, what I'm saying like I, if, I've seen, I've seen like I've seen some of Batman v Superman. I haven't seen the whole thing. From what I have saw, seen of him, um, it seems like he plays a really good Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. He plays, in my opinion, an okay Batman." I wouldn't say like he's the best Batman. Um, I would I would say that, I, and I hate to say this, and people would probably smack me for it, but I think Bale was better than him. I'm gonna be honest. Well, th- this is a different. And, and you know, okay, granted, well, this is only the first time we've seen this Batman, so I can't really give you that mm-hmm. opinion because, well, this is the first time we've seen this version of Batman. But at the same time, you know, it, it, it's. I don't know. It, it just to me, it just seems that it seems like you know this Batman is nowhere near anything that we've seen before. Now, does he beat George Clooney's Batman? Yes. Does he beat um, Val Kilmer's Batman? Yes. Mm-hmm. Does he beat um, Michael Keaton? Michael <laughs> Keaton? No. Nobody beats Michael Keaton. I'm sorry. Well, that's... And, 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 I'm, and you know, I've seen people say, "Well, Michael Michael Keaton is nowhere near uh, Christian Bale." And um, and uh, but that's why that's like, why it's so, it's so weird. You can't compare them because they're so different. Yeah, that's, a, that's apples and oranges. Like, you can't you can't compare them. But I, honestly, like I thought that had they still continued with um, Michael Keaton's Batman, even mm-hmm. into those what was it, uh, the, Batman Forever and, and Batman, Batman and Robin, Robin, yeah, I think it would have turned out even better than what they did. Yeah. The, now, uh, now that being said, you know. I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this comparison. I think that Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck are the two closest kind of Batmans because mm-hmm. here's the thing: both of these guys play a really good Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. and I think you know, yeah. I mean, Bat- Batman can go out and just kick everybody's ass. That's what Bale did, mm-hmm. okay? And he played honestly, he played the best Batman that I've seen in a long time. Like he he did a very good job, like mm-hmm. developing this guy. Like the one thing that I that I've that I've said before, and I believe I've said it on this podcast, is his voice. Like I don't know if they did that on purpose in Batman Begins, mm-hmm. where his voice changed throughout the movie as Batman, but it was something that I thought was actually it actually worked for the film because you know it kind of started off like shitty and then it got better and better and better. At the end of the film, it was Batman's voice, in my opinion. And to me, that was one of those things that, like, really... <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, like, I, that's, right, that's what I hated. I, I, I hated the most about those movies. Where's the trigger? Where's the, these people of Gotham, they showed you that they can be... They can prove you that their hearts are yeah, pure. But, okay. Yeah. I, let me Where's stop the you. trigger? Let me, let me stop you here. Where are these people? They showed you. <laughs> Swear to me! That was the worst part of Batman. Well, it was wait, wait, a wait, joke. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. I Time think out. they could have saved the whole trilogy if they... if if if. Christian, if Christopher Nolan would have gotten the whole voice modular voice modulator idea that they used in Batman v Superman, if they had him give him the voice modulator, I think I would have liked those movies a lot better because well, I think Batman talking like this and where's our trigger? They well, wouldn't well, give okay. it to you. I, I hated that. That was the worst. Okay. That was almost that was 
a joke almost. Can I, okay, okay, go. I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, I, I, supposed I know, to, you, I know you he's supposed this, he's supposed to be intimidating or whatever. One, <laughs> it's stupid. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Let me, let me pause. Right. Okay, <laughs> let me stop you there. You went on a little bit of a tangent. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I might have to pet the head to get you to stop. Okay. Uh-huh. You need to get laid. I okay. Understand. I, I understand, okay? Number one, Batman has never, as far as we know, had a voice modulator, correct? I think it's in the comics. They, I mean, they've been... No. Well, no, I think it's been... They've used it in some of the comics, and that's... You know, it was it was an idea borrowed from the comics. Even Kevin... Like, Kevin Smith like brought that up back when they were doing the Christian Bale movies, that they he goes... He feels that that voice is kind of silly, and they should have used the voice modulator, you know? And it, to me, it only makes sense, because... In a world, you know, in the Batman world, where obviously he has, you know, if, if you have these super geniuses or whatever, you know, you have, a, a, you know, a Riddler or someone like that, that that can, doing their best to figure people out, he's not going to use his regular voice. He's not going to use, right. he's not going to use Bruce Wayne's voice. He's going to change his voice. And even if, like, you know... I mean, yeah. even even if you change the pitch of your voice or something like that, you know. But when he's like, "What is that trigger?" It sounds like it almost. It's like a parody. It's almost like a joke. And I know. I mean, of course, these movies they took it seriously. And I get the idea that he wants to be different. He's transformers. He's trying to be intimidating. But what he did was a joke. I don't. I, I can't. I can't take it seriously. Where what is that? Swear to me. It's you know. First and foremost, that's annoying. It's 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 it, it, well, <laughs> it, I don't know. Like, it's a I throat think, ripper. And I, I do think. Well, okay. I, obviously, like that was that probably hurt his voice. But here, here's the. Main I would point. have liked those movies more here, if they somehow if they adapted the voice modulator in the Christian Bale movies. Yeah, but you know what? Let, let me let, let me stop you here, okay? <laughs> because here's the problem. We've heard the Batman. We've heard the voice of Batman in the animated series, the one that does it correctly. Oh, Kevin yeah, Conroy. Kevin Conroy, okay. who is the now, best let, Batman. Let me put it to you this way. He beats if, everybody. If, okay, yeah, exactly. There's nobody like... There, that is He's Batman's been doing it for voice. 30 years. <laughs> like, even um, Jason Douglas, who does Batman now, mm-hmm. he does... He doesn't... I, I mean, okay, like, I've been... I've come accustomed to his voice, and, mm-hmm. I, and I'm okay with that, but he's nowhere near Kevin Conroy, mm-hmm. and neither is... Um, the guy that did it in Young Justice, I can't think the name off of my head, but he's actually an actor that's been in a lot of uh, mm-hmm. shows and movies, too. But um, the point I'm trying to make here is Christopher Nolan said, I want I want Batman, I want Bruce Wayne to have one voice, and I want to have Batman have this voice. Mm-hmm. Okay? I think he did that correctly. Now, there's never going to be, like, unless you want Kevin Conroy... Which would probably they would probably cost him a fucking arm, Warner Brothers an arm and a leg mm-hmm. to put him in one of these movies just as the voice, mm-hmm. okay? Unless you want Bruce Wayne as Ben Affleck and Kevin Conroy's voice mm-hmm. as the yeah. actual Batman, you're not going to get anywhere with this, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's going to look fucking stupid, actually, mm-hmm. okay? So okay, I, I I don't I'm not I'm not hating on the voice modul- uh, modulator, okay? I actually think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. It makes more sense. It's like Spider Man. It's like Spider-Man in um, the original trilogy. Him actually having it come out of his skin mm-hmm. made more sense to me than having a goddamn fucking web shooter. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing, okay? In the comic books, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But mm-hmm. in real life, how the fuck are you going to explain web coming out of a web shooter and him being not only being able to hold it, but to stay in that web shooter without it breaking? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... I understand why Sam Raimi did it with Spider-Man. And mm-hmm. I understand why Christopher Nolan did what he did. Mm-hmm. And I understand why... Um, God, what's Zack Snyder? I, I thought it was Zack Snyder. Okay. I didn't want to fuck that up yeah. and get, get stabbed. But, you know, that's the thing. Like, I, I honestly think that that was probably the best way to do Batman is the voice modulation, but mm-hmm. I'd also like the way that Christopher Nolan did it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you, I hate to say this, but I do think that they should have used the Christopher Nolan Batman in this. I think it would have worked a lot better for him. Well, remember, he want, Zack Snyder wanted oh, I, Christian I, Bale. Oh, I agree. They should have done he, he Christian want, Bale. He wanted and, to do Christian and, and this is nothing against Ben Affleck. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's nothing against Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. I honestly think that he's done a great job as Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. I think that... As it goes on, Batman will be better, and I especially think that him doing a script for Batman is going to be good. But here's a, here's an issue that I have with DC, mm-hmm. and I, I guess you could say Warner Brothers too because they probably push it. But the problem that DC has always had is they whore out Batman way 
<laughs> too much. You have to even because because people come out in droves. People exactly. come out like and and they've whored him out so much. Like, I mean, you can't even. You're going to introduce all pretty much all these characters in a Justice League movie. I mean, Wonder Woman's. I think the Wonder Woman movie comes out before Justice League, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I don't remember the order. Off yeah, the top it's filming of my now, head. as a matter of fact. Right. So. And, I, and I'm excited for that. I really want to see that. I'm, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you this right now. This is going to prove my point. I was talking about this the other day. About um, we were relating. Um, I don't remember how the conversation came up. It came something with um, women and the fact that like Scarlett Johansson doesn't have um, a Black a, Widow a Black movie. Widow movie. Oh, oh she, we were talking about Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about Ghost in the Shell on the other podcast and. Trust me, guys, you got to listen to that because we, we had a really good conversation about this stupid fucking whitewashing bullshit that people are bitching about. It's so hilarious, but I'm not going to get into that here, yeah. okay? But the point that I'm trying to make here is, you know, and this is a different point, but um, we don't... We, watch what happens with Wonder Woman. This is something that Marvel's going to watch because if Mar- Wonder Woman does extremely well, which I think it will... Mm-hmm. They're going to be pressured to do a Scarlet... Uh, uh, Black Widow movie. Black Widow movie. Yeah, oh, well, every... Look, in all the hate that Batman v Superman got, it was almost universal where everyone said, I hated this movie, it sucks, but I liked Batman and Wonder Woman. Exactly. Everybody, even the, even the people who hate this movie is the biggest lump of shit in the fucking face of the earth. Everybody said Ben Affleck was good, Gal Gadot was good. Even though, okay, there were some people goofing on her her accent or whatever, but... Well, I don't think... You know, I there's no think, um, country the to... Plays, Superman was bad either, but... My problem was is that they they, they just, did Superman Returns and they didn't even give they didn't even give what's his name a chance to do Batman and uh, or Superman and I thought that Superman was you know what no 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 let me take that back it's it's not even that part mm-hmm. I think what and we've talked about this too what it is is it, in this version of Superman he's a lot darker than that Superman that we see. Yeah, Superman is supposed to be dark. I mean, it's, I mean, Superman's supposed to be bright. And, right, and, and, and the only and time hope. that he... The only time that he gets, like, Batman brutal, where mm-hmm. he's like, he's like, no, fuck this, I'll, I'll, I'll put my <laughs> life on the line and I'll kill myself, mm-hmm. is when Darkseid comes around. Because mm-hmm. Darkseid was the only one that got into his head and almost fucking, like, just was brutal to him. Yeah, like that is the only thing that is. I mean, if you watch, I'm watching Justice League, the animated series right now. Mm-hmm. Superman, he's like Batman. Everybody's like, all right, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of this thing. And Superman's like, fuck this. I'm going back here and beating <laughs> the shit. And he he beat the fucking shit out of Darkseid. Yeah, we. Well, he's we, like, we, I don't. He like slammed his head in the ground. He's like, I'm not letting you leave. And fucking Batman had to bring, had to. I don't think he used kryptonite at that point, but he he had to put like a. A boom tube. Uh-huh. He had to use a boom tube to get Superman to suck Superman in and get him out of there because he wasn't listening. And he, he even and he even said to Batman, he's like, somehow he didn't say it like you're an asshole because it's obviously a kids movie, but he was basically calling him an asshole. He's like, mm. Sometimes, oh, he's like, sometimes you don't know all, everything, but yeah, he does because he's Batman. He's the equalizer. He's the one that keeps the world safe. Even in that that um, I can't think. I think it was called Doom, was it? That animated one where Batman and Superman were fighting Darkseid, and Batman basically... And it wasn't it wasn't Superman this time. What happened was is Darkseid was about to kill Batman, mm-hmm. and Batman said to him, fine, kill me, but the minute that I die, this whole... Your whole world just gets destroyed because I've put a virus in. And Darkseid looks at it, he's like, well played. Mm-hmm. And lets him go. Yeah, yeah, the Doom, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, because... The animated and, and that's the thing, like... Don't get me wrong. I, I like Batman, and I and I don't want people to take away from me that I'm thinking that Batman is a bad thing. But also, I think that you know he, I think he's whored out way too much by DC Comics. Yeah, because it's it's too it's 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 too it because it, it makes too much it makes so much money. You know, what I'm saying like it, it does, Batman but... merchandise, Batman toys are just you know the we had such a good version of Batman in the animated series that. You know, you can keep whoring out Batman, and we're still, you know, we're always going to come back and hope. Oh, maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's going to be good. You know, the first two Michael Keaton ones were good. You know, the the Christian. But once again, you know, this, the, you know, uh, the Dark Knight was well, fucking they, and, a masterpiece. And had, they, and had the script gone in the right direction, and had they done it the correct way, like uh, Michael Keaton wanted them to do in the first place, mm-hmm. 
Um, I, I, and, I, and I actually think I heard him say that when when um, the Nolan Batmans were going on, like he he actually said like this is what I wanted Batman to be. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what Batman should have been. Mm-hmm. And I think that he's right. I think that was how Batman should have been. Because had they done it that way in the <laughs> first place, it would have been. There, Mike, we would have had Michael Keaton for at least three movies. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton left because they wanted to be that that stupid cheesy Batman Forever, which I don't get me wrong, I enjoy Batman Forever, but it wasn't the same as Michael Keaton. Yeah, they wanted to sell toys. It's the it's when the studio gets involved, but right. I think Ben Affleck is going to come in and do it right. Oh, yes, do it, I do. <laughs> you know, no pun intended, do it justice. Right. You know, and then you know, and and one thing I like about the voice modulator and and we haven't seen yet, but I I promise you we're going to have this scene. Once again, Batman is all about intimidation. Right. He's going to find a way to hook up that voice modulator like either to the Batmobile or something where his voice is going to be like played on gigantic speakers or some shit like that. So when you're talking about fucking intimidating someone, you're like, what are you doing? You know, so like, you know, and the fucking the whole house is going to shit. You know, there's going to be something where not only is it voice modulator, it's also amplified. Right. And it's going to fucking make, make the guy shit their pants. Um, okay, so, okay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trailer. You said you didn't like it. Cause I, I actually I sent the, I sent you the link on on uh, on Facebook and you said you didn't like it. I liked it. Me farting, man. Should do <laughs> um, you know I like that we finally see Bebop and Rocksteady as Bebop and Rocksteady. Um, you know a lot of people were really upset that you see like them putting like the the purple ooze and they're turning back into humans. Which it's not like they're gonna it's not like they're changing the whole series. They're probably gonna turn into humans for like twenty minutes of the movie. You know, and then or they may not. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's sort of like keeping the team together. Well, how can you keep the team together if we're not turtles anymore, or whatever the case may be? But uh, you know, I, th- I this this tr- you said the trailer sucks. It actually made me more excited to see the movie. You know, I, I kind of, you know, I'm I, excited. I, but on, based on the second trailer, I'm excited to see the movie. This mm-hmm. one was kind of like eh, I don't think you needed to do it this way, but. We'll see how it turns out. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that's going to be bad. Mm-hmm. I do think that Tyler Perry has run out of movies to do, so now he's, <laughs> now he's doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, in all so, fairness, like we'll he see. he was like in a Star he was in like Star Trek two. Star Trek, the first Star Trek. Oh, is in the first one or whatever? The I mean, first one where the yeah, it was the first one. In the first one. I mean, I think Tyler Perry, he's a nerd. Oh yeah, and I oh, think yeah. he wants to Baxter Stockman. He, I think he's Baxter Stockman. Yeah, yeah, he's Baxter Stockman. But I'm saying is that that. I think, like he, I bet he went to like J.J. Abrams, and I bet even in this like Baxter Stock, like I bet he, I bet he basically said I would like to be a part of this, and of course it'd be stupid to say no because yeah, exactly. because he has a built-in fucking audience. So if he goes, you know, I'd like to be a part of this, and they go, okay, make a Baxter Stockman, why not? You know, and the same wow. thing with, uh, you know, oh, I want to be part of, you know, I want to be part of Star Trek. Okay, we'll make you part of the fucking, you know. Federation Council or whatever, you know, it, it, it would be stupid to say no. Right. So, you know, I, I got no problem with him being Baxter Stockman, even though that's not the Baxter Stockman I'm familiar with. But I'm I'm totally fine with it. I, I right. you know, I'm not. Oh, it shouldn't be a black guy. Or whatever. Um, but uh, you know, and it would be funny to see if they do something with him. You know, I mean, you know, if they give us the Mousers or whatever the case may be. But uh, actually, like I said, you know, it's weird that you actually didn't like it. I liked it. It made me more excited. Um, the Rogue One trailer. Um, Let's talk about this real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't get you late for work. Yeah. Well, yeah. So um, it looks interesting. Um, they have a lot of opportunities here where, one, and I think they're not going to spoil it until the movie actually comes out. But in my opinion, we're probably going to see Darth Vader. I wouldn't be surprised if we even see R2-D2 and C-3PO. Because remember, they were with the Rebel Alliance... You know, now of course, this is at the time like before. You know, to quote Star Wars, well, they were, he goes, they, they goes, were, we were with Captain Antilles or whatever. Right. Like they were, they were with with Captain Antilles, so they could have Captain Antilles in this movie. And this is it's R two D two and C three PO before. I mean, yes, obviously they were R two D two and C three PO in the prequels, but remember at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith, C three PO gets his mind wiped. So with that, we can easily put them in this movie. You know. Just, just for just to make the fans kind of happy, you know, sell toys. You know, we can't I... have Darth Vader, or this might even, you know, one of the rumors because there's a scene where you see someone walking towards like a, a the, what they call the back the tank, 
And like he's walking into a big room and there's two like Imperial guards on the side and someone's walking towards this tank in the middle. Some people are saying some people are saying it's you know it's it's the Emperor. Some people are saying that we may even see Snoke, like this might be like maybe we'll see you know, maybe Snoke was some sort of part of this or whatever. So I think it's kind of smart that they could do, they can kind of make a, because this is a prequel. For all intents and purposes, this is a prequel. It's not a prequel. But But Snoke wasn't involved in this at all. And if you're talking about, if we're talking about Darth Plagueis, who everybody thinks is is Snoke, um, well, first of all, if you remember from episode three, Mm -hmm. he, he told Anakin, he said, I killed my master. mm -hmm. And Darth Plagueis was his master. Mm -hmm. But, yes, here's the problem. How did you kill your master when your master knows how to bring people back to life and can manipulate the dark side of the Force this way? I honestly think think what may end up happening is, is that what happens is that Darth Plagueis is able was able to manipulate Darth Vader. And what he did was is he was able to bring him back to the light side because of what happened with his apprentice. Mm-hmm. And he wanted his apprentice dead. And what happened was is he was able to rebuild the Empire in his way. Obviously, it's not named the, re- the Empire now. It's called the, the First uh, Order. The First Order. But mm-hmm. think about that for a second. Like, mm-hmm. Think about that. If, if Darth Plagueis is, a, is still alive and this is Snook, which one of the images from one of the audiobooks looks exactly like Snook. Snoke. <laughs> Snoke, whatever. Snoke, like smoke. But that's, I mean, what I like about this movie is this is, this movie is a prequel. Yeah. Let's not, let's not, let's not but, fucking mince words. It's a prequel to episode four. But what I, what I hope actually the way that they end this is mm-hmm. I hope like it goes to the part where the Star Destroyer is following Princess Leia, mm-hmm. Leia's ship, and you see her like, you, it's not her, but you'll hear her voice. Mm-hmm. Like she'll sit there and she'll start recording that. Into R2-D2. Yeah. That'll be the end, the end of the movie will right. be... The beginning of the beginning, of, yeah. Three. Like, help me, Obi Wan Kenobi, you're my only right. hope. Right. I think it. I hope it. And if it. so, because that's the whole thing is like we'll see C three O and R two D two in this movie, you know, under Captain Antilles. And, you, you and you're right. We need to have that because because it, it was on R two T two R two R two D two. But on, and it'll give and see the whole thing is that since the fact that this is a fucking puppet, you know, it's a robot, it's a it's an animatronic thing, you know. And Anthony Daniels, you could have anybody in that stupid suit. And Anthony Daniels is doing his voice, and not to mention that there's a million other people that probably can do Anthony Daniels' voice. You know, saying you don't actually have to hire the main guy. I mean, they're going to, but you know, um, you can't have those. You can have those characters in a movie because they're they're puppets. They're they're people in suits. You can, you know, if you wanted to, you have Chewbacca in the movie. You wanted to, you know, you could have you could have uh, Darth Vader because once again, all you have to do is get fucking James Earl Jones into a fucking sound studio for about half a day, have them record all the lines they need, and then have some other dude act it out. So, um, you know, I, and plus, you know, it would give people a little something to look forward to as opposed to just oh, here's all these new old, you know, here's all these new characters. Well, I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I have faith in Disney. Um. Okay, and I guess the last thing you know before we get before we really leave, Spider-Man: Homecoming, the new Spider-Man, uh, our most our most downloaded episode, episode one seventy six, Spidey come home, and then uh, here we here they go, and 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 we were talking about the Sony leak and how that led to uh, Marvel getting not getting Spider-Man back, but getting creative control and and making a deal with Sony so they can use Spider-Man in their movies and and. I, I, I'm still under the impression that I thought Marvel Studios is making this movie like they're making the movie but Sony's getting the money. Like that's 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 the way I understood it. I, I thought get a portion of the money, but yes. So. I thought I thought Sony is sort of like, look, we'll let you use the guy, we'll let you even make the fucking movie, but we still own his rights, so you better give us our cut of the money. That's that's the way I understood it. Right. So uh Spider Man Homecoming. I like the fact that one Spider Man looks First, when we saw him in the Civil War trailer, he looks old school. And then this logo looks old school. Like, this looks yeah. like classic, classic, classic Spider-Man, which is the Spider-Man a lot of people knew and grew which, up with. Which, by the way, I, I wanted to add a little caveat to this. The other day they were saying that uh, Spider-Man may actually be in, uh, um, what is it, Deathpool 2. Deadpool. Deadpool 2. Not Deathpool. What the fuck is going on with <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Well, no, I think no, I think the guy, Deadpool. I think the guy who did Deadpool, said uh, the director, who was also like the writer and stuff like that, had said basically we would like to have Spider Man, 
Like he just like it's just he's like he's throwing now. he's throwing it out there. He's like, oh, if you guys will let us use Spider Man, we'll be more than happy to use him, and you know we won't fuck it up. You know we'll let we'll you know you can have creative control over however you want us to depict Spider Man. But you know Spider Man and Deadpool in the comics do have like a weird relationship. You know Deadpool looks up to Spider Man, you know, in a weird way, and so um, that you know if they had Spider Man in the movie. I mean, even if he's in the movie for three seconds, I mean, well, that'll and, make people but happy. But here's the problem. Well, and, and now you're talking about, actually, you talking about them doing. Now you're talking about Sony working with Fox. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, I think I think what would what would be good in this situation is it would do two things. A, you could have the Death Pool Spider Man movie that everybody wants probably at some point, but also now you can have a PG thirteen uh, uh, Deadpool because the problem is people were. Uh, there was it wasn't like a lot of people, but there were people bitching about. Well, I want my kid to go see Deadpool, and now I can't do it because it's rated R. Well, too bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, well, I think that's gonna see the one thing that I think what's gonna be funny is, and once again, this is totally just my my little two cents. Is okay. Let's just say they go and they put Deadpool in the next X Men movie. Like right when he's about to curse, it'll cut away. Yeah. So that'll be the joke. Like every time he's about to do something that you can't do in a PG thirteen movie, it'll cut away, yeah, or, or it'll yeah. it'll cut away and come back, and then you'll see someone's head on the floor or whatever. Because the head on the floor isn't violent. Seeing someone's head get cut off is violent, yeah. you know. So you know it'll be like, and, and even once with him breaking the fourth wall, with him going, "Come on, really?" You know, like you know, okay, fine. I know this is supposed to be PG thirteen, but you know, like. It, they could easily kind of do that whole dynamic in another movie with Deadpool just being a, a you know a, 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 P, a keep a, a partial player you know where you know someone someone even said that like maybe even every time he curses like you'll hear a beep or you'll hear and you'll or you'll see like pixelated over his mouth even yeah. though you don't see his mouth yeah. you know sort of like you know and of course that kind of drags the X Men into his world where you know he's he's he breaks the fourth wall but. You know, I think that would be a funny dynamic that he's trying to be raunchy and evil, and and she's trying to be R rated, and um, and uh, you know, and he keeps getting, for the lack of a better term, cock blocked. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, um, once again, I think Rogue One's going to be good. Um, I'm going to say Spider Man Homecoming, and uh, and once again, the, you know, the fact Homecoming. This is in reference to him being in high school, homecoming. You know, when people when people come back and stuff like that. Uh, you know, this is the Spider-Man we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have a in high school Spider-Man, not senior year, not graduating, or maybe if you know, you know, it's supposed to be a teenager. You know, which was the whole fucking point of Spider-Man in these movies. So, you know, I like that. And then the rumors that Michael Keaton is going to be the bad guy in the movie. They said, Mike. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That would be kind of funny. Oh, what they said Michael Keaton is in the movie. The Iron Man might be in the movie. Yeah, then they they can well you know they got to have Iron Man kind of like you know or at least there's definitely like mention of Stark Industries and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, they can actually have Stark Tower in there. And then they say who is? Didn't they say they got in the J Jonah Jameson? Wasn't it like Gary Oldman or something? Let's or maybe I'm, maybe I don't know. But so there's that. Um, so it's the fact that um, Spider-Man Homecoming, just the name alone and the way it looks, I kind of like that they're going retro because they can go forward with that. Give us old-fashioned Spider-Man. Give us the goofy, corny, uh, you know, kitty Spider-Man, and then he can evolve later on in the movies to be a little more gritty and a little more realistic and a little more, you know, give us a fun Spider-Man. People want fun sp- uh, superhero movies. Um, okay, what's his face? Uh, kind of earlier I mentioned um, uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart and The Rock are doing a Jumanji movie? They might be. That's that's a bad idea. Yeah, it is a bad idea. Um, but then, you know, Rock uh, then, you know, The Rock will be eventually doing his Black Adam movie, which I'm super looking excited super excited for and looking forward to. Uh The Fight Club 2, the comic books sucked ass. I'm just telling people right now. I I love the movie, I love the book. Uh Fight Club the comic book Fight Club Part 2 was a mm-hmm. fucking waste of time and money. And by the time you get to the tenth issue, they just fucking everything just de evolves. Right. Um, and then there's, I don't know, is there a petition again about Metalocalypse coming back or whatever? Because I know there was a thing online the other day. Yeah. Where you can fax, you can fax like the offices in Georgia, and yeah. then they put a, like a live feed on the fax, and people were faxing all types of like crazy things and Nicolas Cage pictures and and <laughs> stuff like that. So I signed a petition. So if you're interested in bringing back Metalocalypse. 
Uh, just Google it. And you well, I think it. that means that there's going to be, there's going to probably be some. Yeah, some I mean, it, it, you know, they're they're putting, you know, they're putting it out there just to kind of get a vibe. They're, they're and fucking I think... with people. Adult Swim likes to fuck with people, mm-hmm. and then they like to. Well, oh, okay, so I kind of have a little experience with this. Mm-hmm. Tsunami, whatever. To, what they did was what the, a little interesting fact about it was is Tsunami when they did the April Fool's joke, they they did it for two reasons. Number one. You know, they wanted to do something huge for April Fool's finally. Mm-hmm. But number two, not only did they, they want to do something huge, but they wanted to see what the feeling was about Toonami four years later. And sure enough, everybody's like, bring this shit back. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they needed something to, you know, make the Adult Swim action hour, as it was deemed, uh, better for anime. And lo and behold, there you go. Toonami comes back. So I, don't don't be surprised if Metalocalypse comes back. Yeah. And at least, you know what, if, it, if it's like six episodes and it ends the series, that's all it needs. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what they wanted to do. They, I mean, they they did the Doom Star Requiem, and I think they kind of they know how they want to finish it. Let them finish it the way that they feel. Uh, and so and Paul's looking at me like he's like, "We gotta fucking go." <laughs> you gotta well, go. I have to be at work, but I mean, it, I could be I could get to work from your house in like seven minutes, so we could wrap this up. And and that's uh, what she said. <laughs> all right, so let me see. Uh, why did I feel like I had something else to talk about? But I guess not. Okay. Please visit two strangers one podcast.net where you can find all things show related. And once again, thank you for listening to four years worth of Two Strangers One Podcast. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I was I, the best co-host. I was so, you know, I was I not expecting it to last this long, and 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 actually, I'm in a much better mood than I was like fucking three four hours ago when I was in my bed, in bed not fucking wanting to. You, get know, up. you know what it is? It's because I'm sitting here naked as we do the podcast. <laughs> And and I want to thank Paul for fucking you know calling me and getting me out of the fucking getting me out of my funk. Um, You're on the list. Darrell will be next. <laughs> but please visit two strangers one podcast dot net. We can find all things show related. You can go back and see, uh, find the links to our iTunes page where you can go back and listen to older episodes of Two Strangers One Podcast. And so you can subscribe to us if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod. Does anyone fucking have an iPod anymore? <laughs> but if you do, you can subscribe to your to your uh, through us on iTunes. You can find the link on two strangers podcast dot net. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, and you have an Android device, you can follow us on the Stitch Rep. That's S T I T C H E R. The Stitch Rep. It's what I use. I download episodes in a Wi-Fi spot. So you don't have to kill your data. You put in a listen later option and the listen offline option. Download all your episodes mm-hmm. and then uh, listen to it later when you're out. So you're not killing your data. You're not killing your battery. And that's, like I said, I mean, I listen to, you know, Kevin Smith's Smodcast, Chris Hardwick's The Nerdist, and, of course, Paul's other baby. Damn the fucking t- straight. The Toonami Faithful Podcast. And I subscribe to it. And the good thing is, you know, when you're back in a Wi-Fi spot, you know, it'll let you know, you know, downloading new episodes. By the way, we're coming up on 200 episodes. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> I was saying, I think, yeah, because this this will be episode 214, if I'm this not one. mistaken. And that one will be live, actually. So. Oh, awesome. We, um, do, we do every 100 episodes live. So. Uh, <laughs> every 100. Um, so, uh, once again, follow us on the Stitcher app. Um, you can write to us at two strangers one podcast at gmail dot com. I was checking our our email the other day. I don't know. Oscar wrote us that one time, and then he kind of fell off. I'm gonna double. I haven't checked it before this episode, but he hadn't written us recently. Um, you can follow us that on. Guy. You can follow us <laughs> on Facebook. You go to facebook dot com slash two strangers one podcast. All spelled out. Facebook dot com slash two strangers one podcast. Uh, we've been getting a lot of new likes recently. And a lot of people have been sharing episodes and stuff like that. So thank you very much to all the new listeners uh, checking us out. Uh, uh, once again, we like your money. We want your money. We need your money. But if we don't have, <laughs> you can't give us money, you can uh, just share and like the episodes. Just go on. Um, yeah. And once again, I'm really surprised that uh, I'm really surprised that that Oscar has not written us. <laughs> yeah. What well, I'm he's... checking. I'm checking our email right now. He hasn't written us, but. It's all good. He's he's interacted with the show plenty of times. And shit, I put his name in the fucking. I put his name in the, the episode title, and I, I thought he'd that in, that get him more interaction, but I guess not. Oh man, I did want to read you something. Oh boy, shit. What? Where did it go? Where did it go? It was from our. It was from our YouTube page. Um. 
I'm somebody sorry. Somebody say something about Somebody him? said something. Okay. Oh, this fuck was them. <laughs> Okay. Wow, I totally forgot. I got it. I got I'm bringing it up right now. So you can find us on uh and also speaking of our YouTube page, uh you could go on YouTube and search for Two Strangers One Podcast. Um it for the older episodes that you can't find on iTunes or you can't find on our Podomatic page or you can't find on our Stitcher, I've uploaded a bunch of older episodes. Um uh, onto I onto YouTube. So you go to YouTube and search for Two Strangers Little Podcast. If you could subscribe, that'd be great. That'd be fucking awesome. Okay, so here we go. This was from our episode of. It was the hold on. I gotta bring it. Let's see if I can bring it up. It was from our episode where I had. It was the episode called "Is Lex Luthor Black?" <laughs> episode one eighty. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. okay, this was. I guess this will be the new Oscar. And Anton Lamont had said, I wasn't going to say anything, but this dickhead Paul needs to get his face verbally slapped. (laughs) A straight up Wu-Tang liquid sword slap. Come on, dude. Like, no man. Uh, Like, no man. He's like black. Like, I swear, dude. Like, like, hey, dickhead, shut the fuck up. (laughs) I will never listen to a podcast that features your stupid dunderhead dipshit perspective ever again. How is the DC animated universe Lex Luthor black? Uh, because they drew lips on him uh, to give him more of a standout appearance. Then you Google just Lex Luthor. Seriously, why not Google DC animated universe Lex Luthor and save your ass 15 minutes of searching through fodder? Another example of what of uh, why you're an absolute moron, dude. Then just say, hey, could you like more? Could you like wait? How could they like make more Transform movies or spinoff movies? Haha, <laughs> seriously. Gee, I don't know, because the Transformers mythos is Marvel deep and it stretches back eons. Yes, it's formulated uh, okay, continuity. Well, we, okay. can stop. we can stop right there. First of all, I uh, actually speak English for once. Uh, number two, um, yeah, I'm not the only one that thinks that the Lex Luthor that was in most of the animated series back in the day looks black. <laughs> so if you can't see that, then you're a dumb fuck. Oh, by the way, if you had commented on one of my videos, I probably would have blocked you and then reported your ass because you're a dumb fuck that needs to clearly go back to school. <laughs> Shut the fuck up and speak English because you, you clearly need to learn English better. So, <laughs> But anyways, let's let's get out of here. Anton Lamont. Um, Anton's stupid, hey? That's what the fuck he is. And so uh, let me see. What else? Um you can write to us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. You can go on our YouTube page and make <laughs> comments just like this. <laughs> and then get destroyed by me. And and, and we'll we'll respond to them. I'm glad I remembered that because that's fucking hilarious. Uh, and basically just talks about how Transformers has, you know, a whole bunch of other good uh, storylines that they can use as movies. So uh, that's it. I can't think of anything else. I acquiesce the floor to you, sir. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Pasquillo. You can find me on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Paul Pasquillo. And, of course, you can ask me questions. Ask.fm slash Paul Pasquillo. And uh, try not to make some stupid comments because I will verbally destroy you. Just like this fucking idiot <laughs> on YouTube. So, there you go. All right. So, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers on Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fapping all over my face. Hey, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double that? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris it's- Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But... <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I know, I know. Oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I got to meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia. Is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women, 
Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer, she got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Fuck a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. (laughs) Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. (laughs) (laughs) Normally one says it, but spells it still. Lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15.00. And a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on. Come, I, like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. (laughs) Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I will totally read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. How is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out Two Strangers One Podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out.